Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to introduce congruent figures and correspondence, and I'm also going to introduce three different ways that we are going to use to prove triangles congruent. Let's begin with a quick review of congruency. So congruent figures are figures that have the same shape, so we use the tilde for shape, same shape, and the same size. And that's where we got our congruent symbol from. Okay, also in congruent figures, all pairs of corresponding parts of the figures are congruent. And the corresponding parts are the, the sides of the angles that, that match up. Okay, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But all the pairs of corresponding parts of the figures are congruent. So congruent triangles, if we know triangles are congruent, then we know that all the pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. And as you know, triangles are made up of three sides and three angles. So the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles will all be so when we're working with correspondence, we want to match up the sides and the angles. So in this particular figure here, we have two triangles. We have triangle ABC and we have triangle XZY. And we've marked our angles with their congruencies. So is triangle ABC congruent to triangle XYZ, or is triangle ABC congruent to triangle XZY? Well, correspondence, we have to match up the sides and the angles. So angle A corresponds to angle X. So in both of these, since A is first, and the X is first, that's telling us that those must correspond. Okay? And angle B and angle Y have the same tick mark. So B and Y, those two correspond. But in this one, we have B as listed second and Z is listed second. So in this one, in the bottom one here, we're saying that angle B corresponds to angle B. Well, angle B does not have the same tick mark as angle B. So, we don't have a correspondence here. This doesn't match up. Okay? Um, C has the same tick mark as Z. So, we have C and Z with correspondence. And in this one, C is supposed to match up with Y. But C is a double tick mark, and Y has one with a slash through it. So those don't correspond either. So even though this is the same triangle, this is not, triangle XZY is not in the same order. And order is important. So this one, the bottom one, is incorrect. That is not written correctly, so those two triangles are not congruent. The first one is correct because we have the proper correspondence. So, the lesson there, order matters. Very critical part. Order matters because it tells us what corresponds. And it goes beyond just the, the angles. It also goes to the side. So segment AB has to correspond to segment XZ. So segment AB has a single tick mark, and segment XZ has a double, okay? So AB doesn't match up with XZ. Or BC, actually BC does match up with ZY, but AB doesn't match up with XZ. So again, another way that that, that doesn't have the correct correspondence. So keep in mind, order matters. Oh, there it is again. Must be really important. All right. 
on to section 3.2 and proving triangles congruent. So we said earlier in the notes today that congruent triangles imply all the pairs of corresponding parts are congruent, and this is reversible. This goes the other way. If all the pairs of corresponding parts are congruent, then we have congruent triangles. Congruent triangles imply all the pairs of corresponding parts congruent, and it's reversible, goes in the other direction. So, but in truth, we only need three pairs of corresponding parts congruent to prove the triangle congruent. Okay? And we're going to start with these three, but right now we only need three pairs of corresponding parts congruent to prove triangles congruent. So here is our first postulate. Okay, Our first postulate says if there exists a correspondence between the vertices of two triangles such that three sides of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding side of the other triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So that's going to look something that was not a good triangle that is going to look something like this so if i have triangle abc and triangle x y z again and ab is congruent to xy and ac is congruent to xz and bc is congruent to YZ, then I have congruent triangles by what we would call side, side, side. And you can abbreviate that SSS. So this is a reason and a proof right here. We get we can prove the triangle congruent by side side side. We say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle X, Y, Z, and hopefully I have my correspondence matching up, and I do. The segment BC is congruent to segment YZ, and AB is congruent to XY, and we would say those two triangles are congruent by, and our reason would be side, side, side. The next postulate says if there exists a correspondence between the vertices of two triangles such that two sides and an included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So the included angle, that means that the, the angle must be between the two sides. So this means between the two sides. And sure enough, look at that. Our postulate that we could use as a reason and a proof has the angle is in between the two sides. That's why side, angle, side, the angle is in between. Those figures might look something like this. So if we had triangle PQR, and triangle XYZ, we had side angle side, we might have something that looks like that side angle side. So our two triangles are triangle PQR is congruent the triangle, make sure I've got my correct correspondence here. So XY corresponds to PQ, triangle XYZ. And the reason we would write in a proof is simply side, angle, side. So now we've got two ways to prove triangle congruent. Side, 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 angle, side. And then the third one will be this final one.
if there exists a correspondence between the vertices of two triangles such that two angles and an included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other, then the two triangles are congruent. So now we have two angles and an included side, and that is going to be angle side angle or ASA. So here now the side is between the two angles. And here's your reason and proof and your diagram might look something like this and we're going to do angle side angle so I can have an angle and a side another angle and I could have an angle and a side and another angle so the side is between the two angles. The side has to be between the two angles. So let's have triangle ABC. And I'm just going to label this one XYZ. And then I'll get you started. Triangle ABC is congruent to now which triangle? Because I, I didn't match this up, so you're going to have to write the correct correspondence here. So Tell me which triangle, triangle ABC, is congruent to. Remember, order matters. Oop, angle, side, angle. All right, let's take a look at those samples of proving triangles congruent. Okay, here we are given that Segment AD is congruent to segment CD. We are given that B is the midpoint of AC, and we want to prove triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. We're going to get this triangle on the left congruent to this triangle on the right. That's going to be our goal. So let's go ahead and start marking our diagram. AD is congruent to CD. I got that. And then B is the midpoint of AC. Well, we know if B is a midpoint, that AB has got to be congruent to BC. So, segment AB is congruent to segment CB. And that's our definition of a midpoint. A midpoint divides segment into two congruent segments. If we have a midpoint, then we have congruent segments. All right, so now we have two sides already congruent. So we should know that if we're going to prove these triangles congruent, we're probably not going to use angle side angle. We're going to use one of the ones that has two sides. So we're going to try for side 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 or side angle side. Right now, we don't know anything about these two angles, angles A and C, and those would be the ones we'd need congruent to get side angle side, because they'd have to be between the two, the angles have to be between the two sides. Probably the easiest is DB. This side is common to both. So we're going to say DB is congruent to DB by reflective. It's a common side. So we did reflexive when we did addition and subtraction. So now we have these triangles congruent by side, side, side. Be careful with our order here. Triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And that is by side, side, side. And one thing I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to want the steps, the step numbers, of the, in this case, of the three sides. So our step numbers are step one, step three, and step four. So side, 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 step one, step three, step four, those are three pairs of corresponding sides. Take a look at this one. This one's going to be a little bit longer, it looks like. 
Okay, we've got this diagram and we're given that angle three is congruent to angle six. So I've got that. And we've got KR is congruent to PR. I'm going to mark that. And that angle KRO is congruent to PRM. KRO, that big angle is congruent to that big angle. I better change my tick mark there. Okay, so we're given angle three is congruent to angle six. Our goal is to get triangle KRM congruent to triangle PRO. So the far left triangle and the far right triangle, we want those congruent. Well, we've got some stuff going on up here. We've got some stuff going on down here at angles three and four and at five and six. Um, as it turns out, since three is congruent to six, we might know that angle Four is going to be congruent to five because they're supplementary to these two congruent angles. But we need to establish supplements. So we're going to say that angle four is supplementary to angle three. And angle five is supplementary to angle six. And Two angles form a straight angle, then they are supplementary. And then now we have angle four congruent to angle five. So now I have angle four is congruent to angle five by supplements of congruent angles are congruent. Okay, so I'm going to mark those. And I'm going to mark my diagram. So I have angle side, and I'd love to get this top angle congruent to that top angle. I'm going to save myself a little aggravation. I'm going to Label those angles one, two, and three. So we're given PR is congruent to KR and KRO is congruent to PRM, but we really need angle one congruent to angle two. Well, we're going to do a little subtraction here. Angle three is congruent to angle three by reflexive. And then we're going to Pull angle three out of there. We're going to subtract that out, and that's going to give our left behind angle one congruent to angle two. And we get angle one is congruent to angle two by subtraction. And we are subtracting the same set of points. So subtraction of the same angle, subtraction same. Angle three is being subtracted. And, uh, and now we have our triangle congruent by angle, side, angle. Angle four, the side, and angle one, and angle five, the far right side, KP, and angle two. So the triangles are congruent. By angle, side, angle, and then the steps that I use to get those congruent, well, angle one and angle two is one of the steps. The reflexive is not, but KR and PR, that's our side, and then angle four congruent to angle five. So here we have our angle, our side, and our angle, so step three, four, and seven lead to angle, side angle. So there's a more extensive proof, a complete proof, things that we've used uh, back in chapter two, and some new stuff with that reflexive step. Oh, nope, the reflexive step was in the previous proof, that reflexive step. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.